Okay, so uh, I think I can put this back. <sighs> okay, so um, um, right, I think uh, I think it's good if I finish to talk about BBT four. Um, and then, uh, I mean, so I'm going to, to steal some of the time I was, uh, uh, I wanted to use for CBKKD, uh, but I will, uh, yeah, finish this because this, I think it's important. Now, um, so, uh, so we had this protocol and interceptor sent 25% error, which is the QBAR. Now, looking at the, uh, so, uh, looking at the, um, at this table uh, about this dropper. So what you understand there is that, uh, okay, so uh, let's say, if you see, you know, for each uh, ZZ, XX, sifting, this dropper is actually getting, uh, after the time, she's getting uh, the information because I mean, if we've got ZZ, she picks the right, the right basis 50% of the time, and the same for XX, so somehow, if you want, you can say that the Eve is information, so the stolen information by Eve is kind of, is kind of like, no, uh, one half, no, uh, or, uh, per so-called sifted bit, okay? So sifted bit is basically, yeah, when you have like, uh, the procedure of sifting, you are discarded, the, the, okay, the, the uh, uh, some of the after the of the instances, and you come up with these strings, okay, where which are for ZZ and X and X, and so it's one half per safety bit. Um, right. So what is the Alice and Bob motor information? Okay. So let me call this uh, motor information of if okay the information of so uh, Alice and Bob motor information is. Well, this, this, I mean, this actually, it's simple, no? because uh, it's uh, uh, computed from classical information theory. So remember no? that uh, what's going on between uh, the encoding and the decoding is a banal symmetric channel, okay? With some probability P, which is given by the QBAR, okay? So let's say the QBAR is P, in this case is, okay, one quarter. So when you have like a banal symmetric channel, no? Which is, this with this cross probability p here, one minus p, one minus p, Sarah and Bob. No, now okay, no. These are these are chosen with the probability one half. So the entropy, okay. So I took basically I have to compute the Alice, the Alice and Bob uh, motor information. So the entropy of the of the of the input bit. Okay, that is, uh, so let's say the channel entropy of the of Alice, okay, uh, well this can be, can be pretty like this, minus the, uh, the entropy, the conditional entropy of Alice given Bob. Okay, if you want to use classical variables, so let's call this variable is, is, is basically, okay, the alpha variable and this is actually beta, so probably it's better to use that. So that's the definition of motor information. So motor information is above is the channel entropy of alpha minus the conditional channel entropy of alpha given beta. Okay? So that's the motor information of between us and Bob. Okay, now the channel entropy between, uh, I mean, of alpha is one bit. Okay? Is one. Right? So in this, in this case, this particular is like a binary channel entropy, okay? Um, now, uh, here, it's, so what is this? It's like, okay, suppose that Bo 
envelope gives, uh, I mean, uh, an output beta, okay? From that output beta, it may basically build some kind of estimator of the input alpha, which with some probability, okay, that estimator give you like the correct, uh, uh, the correct alpha, the correct input. And basically using this probability, you can, you can write down this uh, Shannon entropy. And it's like, uh, well, this is actually given by, is actually, for this particular process, this is actually equal to P, the transition probability. Okay? So it is, so the probability that Bob is getting uh, a, a alpha um, correctly is, uh, uh, sorry, it's basically it's one minus p, actually, is the probability, basically is the probability that, is this probability here, okay, in this case. So uh, what you want to, so, so what you compute then is, this is actually, uh, what is called, so that's okay, also, two pieces of binary entropy, so that's actually H2P. So for, for those who don't, um, for those who don't remember the, um, uh, the binary Shannon entropy. Uh, so that's, that's actually, I mean, it's just uh, uh, this guy here. So that's H2P is, well, no, it's like a minus P log 2P, right? Uh, minus 1 minus P log 2, 1 minus P, okay? Uh, Okay, so you get something like this. So you get one minus H to P, but in particular this P is one half here, okay? And <clears throat> also, uh, 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 yeah, so, um, so that the problem is that when you compute this quantity, and you put here, uh, well, one quarter, okay? So that quantity is less than this for this attack, okay? That's the problem, okay? So somehow this q bar, this value, is too high, okay? It's too high, and it's, it's making this, error, this mutual information too low with respect to the information that that Davis drop has stolen, okay, and in the, okay, you can find the exact numbers in the in the in the, in the document. I think this is around the last, this is like a, around like a, a zero point nineteen something. Like this so it's quite it's quite it's quite lower than that, okay. So what's the point? Is the point is that okay, you can actually uh, when you look at this. Uh, so this is actually a, a, a theorem from classical information theory by Cesar and Connor. So a rate. I mean, uh, a key rate can be distilled, okay, can be extracted if you have something like this. So Alice and Bob both information minus, say, the Evis dropper information, if this quantity, okay, is bigger than zero, so greater than zero. So if you're in this situation here, right, so you get like, uh, okay, say that's my Alice and Bob both information, so up to here is the, somehow the part Okay, which is given by, which is, it is dropped by the, by Heave. So that quantity, this part here, is going to be the rate, okay? Asymptotically, is going to be the rate. <coughs> I mean, there are some procedures to transform the data, okay, into a key which has this rate. So when I say rate here, it can, it's, it's basically, it's a number of bits. It will be number of secret bits Okay, per use, for example, per use of the channel, for instance. Okay, or per 50 bits, I mean, it depends. Okay, you can, I mean, define in different ways. Let's say, typically, it's per use of the channel, so every time you use the channel. So it's the number of secret bits per use of the channel, okay? <coughs> and it's this quantity. So basically, you see, there's like, like, there's like a, a, a shortening, shortening of the data into something which is secret. Now, as I tell you, in this case, it doesn't happen because this noise is too much, and this R will be negative, okay? So if P, the Q bear, is too high, the rate is negative, it means that you're at the board. 
But if P is lower, so if the Q bar is lower, then you can have like a positive Q rate. So it's very important that the Alice and, part, the Alice, uh, Alice and Bob, they are able to estimate the error on the line. So they do this parameter estimation. <laughs> okay. So if you want, okay, we started with like, uh, uh, I mean, some kind of uh, long, uh, long strings of, of values, like a 0, 1, 0, and so on, uh, 0, 1, so on, and say, say n uses of the channel, okay? Then we got basically, they became like half of the size after sifting, okay? So this becomes sort of basically uh, an after the size after sifting because of the basis problem. Uh, then you have to take away uh, one part for parameter estimation, like a random subset. Okay, let's say that's M, that's part there. And so you, can, you, you go, basically you have like a shorter, is like N over two minus M. So oh, let's put that this. Okay. Now it's not finished. Now if, okay, so we are, we are doing this kind of shortening of the key rates. Now if, after using this parameter estimation from here, okay, they say, okay, let's say the Q bar is less than a value that I'll show you in a bit, which is like actually 11%, uh, so not 25. So this means that the, uh, the attack is uh, not so strong, okay, somehow, is not so, uh, uh, it's not intercept percent, it's another attack. So we can actually, <coughs> we can actually have a positive key rate, okay? And so we, have to, we can then achieve basically uh, the difference, okay? We can achieve the, um, I think a key. So what's going on there? Okay, but it's not finished because I mean, uh, basically this, these two uh, uh, bars here are kind of the total bar there. Okay. Okay. Now you have to take take off this uh, this quantity. So now there's, there are two procedures. I'm not going to explain them, but the point is that okay, there are two procedures which are error correction. So assuming that the Q bear is acceptable, and basically you have a rate which is positive. Okay. Now I have to clean. Still have to clean these strings from first errors. Okay. And second. I had to somehow make them, uh, I had to decouple the, the eavesdropper from them. And these are uh, basically the two procedures of error correction. And the second one is called privacy amplification. So these are, is, these are classical, prof, uh, amplification, classical procedures which are done on the, on the data. Okay, so it's kind of post-processing. Okay, so when I do these two procedures of error correction and price simplification, okay, basically I'm cleaning them by this, basically by the errors and by this part. Well, okay, first, I mean, this, of course there is some kind of a reduction as well. So basically this data is going to be reducted as well. So you get like a short, <laughs> okay, somehow like minus two, minus M, a contribute a contribution from say error correction. Okay, and then yet, we can go even shorter. Okay, and then you have like something like this, minus error correction, minus process amplification. Right, and then you have like two final strings, okay, which are uh, your key, uh, you have the same, <laughs> and these are your, uh, Alice and Bob, this, are, this is classic Alice and Bob, uh, uh, Secret key. <clears throat> well, now the point is that since I'm starting from something that can be very big here, and so actually these two can be, I mean, uh, you can actually extract a lot of bits, as, uh, I mean, a lot of bits anyway, okay? So at the end of the day, I mean, the number of, I mean, the, 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 the length of, this, of these strings, I mean, it could be of the order of, I don't know, 10 to the, to the eight, uh, 10 to the 9, I mean, a, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of information, I mean, you can actually, uh, I mean, a, a, lot, a lot of bits you can actually share. So, so that's more, more, this is a procedure which is basically uh, 
uh, happening uh, overall, I mean, in all, uh, uh, in basically every uh, QKD process, uh, every QKD protocol, you have this kind of uh, steps. Uh, when you have, we are sure about this, then you can, you can use error correction process simplification to, to come up with your, uh, with your secret key there. So I have to, uh, to drink some water. <clears throat> <clears throat> but, okay, so, um, right, so the optimal, okay, so let me tell you about the optimal attack, because, I mean, it's like, okay, wh wh why this, where this number comes from, so, um, the optimal attack is an, uh, the attack which uh, somehow gives you uh, the lower Q bar. So somehow, okay, I'm using, we are Alice and Bob, they are uh, uh, estimating the noise on the channel, right? What is the minimum, the minimal Q bear they may tolerate? Okay, so there is, okay, this, this is the value. So anything which is above 11% is bad. So you need to abort the protocol. Anything which is below is fine, and you can go on and extract a key. So what, what is an attack that gives you exactly 11% of Cuba, okay? Which is what I call an optimal, that is dropping strategy for BB, BB84. So it's not based on interceptor sound. It's a more complicated one. I mean, it's a, clearly it's a, it's a kind of less invasive attack, okay? Where the system are not directly measured by, by the BBS dropper, but she attach and seal us, okay? She attach uh, basically auxiliary, um, auxiliary systems to the input uh, uh, signal, and then it is up to measure them, okay, in some kind of optimal way. So uh, <coughs> it's something like this. Now suppose that uh, suppose that Alice is kind of encoding. So suppose that you have A, okay. So A is, could be like a zero, one, or plus, minus, well, it depends on the basis, okay. So it's completely symmetric, right? And uh, so for simplicity, just consider like the Z basis. So let's say A is, could be like a zero, one. And then let me, let me like define A orthogonal as the other choice. So if A is zero, A orthogonal is one, and, and so on. If A is one, A orthogonal is zero, okay? So basically, I have two possible inputs <coughs> here, which are orthogonal states, okay? And the same for the other basis. I mean, you can say, okay, plus, man, okay, you can, this would be like in, in, in the X basis, or this for the Z, but it could be the same for the X basis. Okay, so she's, she's encoding this bit here, I suppose that she's sending that state, okay? And now what's going on is that Eve, okay? Here's a Bob. Now Eve, instead of doing interceptor send, she can actually, uh, well, apply a unitary here, okay? With some input uh, state that she has, right? And then she has some output, okay? And this is going to Bob. <coughs> now, her output here could be even, uh, say, stored in a quantum memory. It could be taken there a long time. So she's, com she's actually uh, <coughs> collecting a lot of outputs in this way. So every time she's applying this unitary. And, and, and uh, she's collecting uh, a corresponding output for any input that Alice is sending. So at the end of the day, she's collecting a lot of stuff in this quantum memory. She waits, Alice and Bob communicating. She waits that she are, they are a kind of uh, agreeing the basis. They are doing error correction. So she, she, she waits, I mean, as, as much as she can. And at the end, after she waits all this, okay, and she 
basically, uh, uh, she's able to, and she, she knows about all the classical communications, she applies some kind of very general measurement joint on all this quantum memory, so powerful that it's able to achieve the label bound, okay, which is the maximum information you can derive, extract from an ensemble of channels. Okay? So somehow this measurement gives her the so-called O-level bound. Okay? So it's a very, it's a very a powerful uh, protocol. Okay? So let's talk first about this. Okay, the first part I want to talk is about this interaction. So the, the dynamics of this protocol, of this attack. And then second, like the information threading part, which is uh, uh, basically the level bound, and what is the rate, giving that Q bar of 11%. Now, what is this interaction here? So this interaction could be like uh, represented in this way. Like, uh, okay, so it's a, it's a unitary, which, uh, well, I call that could be, uh, well, can we, can we just simply call that E? Okay. Uh, so it's kind of, something like this. So it's applied to, it is applied to the input. And then you get, uh, well, you get A, the same uh, 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 input with some, okay, state, which is called FA. So that is the upper state of this dropper, <coughs> plus A perpendicular, uh, something like this, BA. Okay? Yeah? Oh, sorry, more voice. Yeah, this is not clone. There is no cloning. Um, even though there is no cloning, you still have to evaluate what is the best uh, performance the this dropper can achieve using some unitary. It could also be a quantum cloning machine. So quantum cloning machine is not, is not, is not going to clone everything perfectly, but still you have like an output which may be imperfect. So if it is like a quantum cloning machine there, right? Here you get same a state for the dropper. Let's call that like uh, some state condition on, on, uh, on the input. Now that state is not, say, the input, okay? Because of a cloning. But it may be like, uh, <clears throat> not so far from that, from that. So you need to quantify how far is from the input. So somehow the fidelity between that, that state and the input. Uh, because a quantum cloning machine, they work in a, in a the, the, the realistic quantum cloning machine, I mean realistic, I mean they have a noise. Somehow, if, if somehow you have like two outputs, right? And you may tune the quantum cloning machine in such a way that one output is good and one output is bad. Now for instance, if this dropper could like do like uh, give this to Bob, and she can get like a good output, for instance. That's one possibility. So you need to understand basically what, so a quantum cloning machine, like a realistic one, you can have like two, which are two clones, like that's say, say, the, say the input, and then you may have like two clones, like say, let me call that uh, uh, for Bob and for Eve. The quantum cloning machine can say, okay, can be tuned in such a way that, uh, okay, this is close to the input, this is not, or could be the opposite. This is close to the input, and this is not. Okay, so for instance, it depends how she used that. So if you, if you use it in a, in a very uh, uh, bad, well, if you use this, this case, for instance, right, she's actually getting a lot of information from the input. But there's a lot of noise, because what's going on to Bob is very far from what Alice she, she was sending, right? So there's always this trade-off between, uh, say, the input information, the information that this dropper is getting from the input, and somehow the noise she, she is uh, inserting in the channel. So in this case, she has a lot of information, but a lot of noise for Bob. If, he, if she used this, little noise for Bob, but she gets the, 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 the bad clone, so her motor information will be low. In terms of quantum error correction, sorry? 
Because I, I can't I can't hear you very well, sorry. Yeah. Uh, well, you, okay, you can actually really correct errors in that case because it's like it's a somehow data processing inequality. So whatever, I mean, if you want to do that, you need to use a error correction here. So if it's like a quantum error correcting code there, right? So I can actually do some quantum decoding there. If you don't use quantum error correcting code here, right, and do it like a, like a quantum I mean, it's just a protocol like this, and like signals, which are not quantum, uh, not with the quantum error correcting code. There's not, not much you can do. It's just, I mean, an information theoretic uh, comparison between uh, uh, one output and the other. There's no real error correction you can do because uh, uh, because anything anything which is here, okay, uh, by data processing inequality, gives you a lower motor information than what you get here. But I mean, we, we, should, we should discuss that later in more detail because, uh, okay, so, um, so what's the deal here? Is that, uh, okay, so when she does this, uh, and when she does this, then okay, then now, doing this kind of, uh, so, so this is basically what is uh, uh, left to Bob, and this is basically her state, okay? And now this is actually what is like encoded here. Okay. Now, uh, without going to too many details because there is enough time, what I want to tell you is that when you analyze this protocol, and actually it's quite simple, okay? Because uh, um, uh, in terms of, uh, I mean, if you know about the basic knowledge, uh, if you have basic knowledge in uh, volume bounds and this kind of stuff, um, it's quite uh, uh, easy to, to study, but uh, uh, okay, so basically, if you if you see here, I'm talking about this 34 there, right? <coughs> exactly. Uh, and then, uh, okay, uh, somehow the this dropper, somehow, the, okay, you can make some choices of the. So these choices here tells you a potential a potential form the this dropper can use for that unitary. Okay, that's one potential this uh, some potential unitary. There are many, actually, okay? But, I mean, this just, just specify one potential, okay? So if you use that, okay? So what's going on, actually, sorry, I, I, I'm skipping this, but what you get, you have to compute the, uh, you compute this one. This is the only bound I'm talking about, okay? This. And so that's the maximum information she can get. So you fix, you, you fix that kind of uh, unitary interaction she collects this, this, all these states, and she apply, she compute the level bound, you compute the level bound, that's the maximum information she can get. And if you assume this situation here, then now what is the rate? So the rate is the difference between Alice and Bob, mutual information, and Davis dropper, or level bound. Okay, now I'll, talk about, I mean, I'll tell you what is the level bound now. So the rate of the protocol, that would be like, uh, and it's about motor information, remember as before. But now you don't have like, a, uh, I mean, now you have like this guy, okay? The O-level bound, okay? Which is given by this kind of more complicated uh, process and so on, right? So if you remember, the level, what is the level bound? So the level bound is, is this. So suppose you have like uh, uh, an ensemble of channels, uh, an ensemble of, of states in general, okay? So that's probability, okay? So these are, these are states, okay, with probability pk, okay? So for instance, it could be like, uh, the simplest case, you have like a uh, probability p0, you have like one state, probability p1, you have uh, another state, for instance, okay? Then you, you, uh, you compute the average state from this ensemble, let me call that E, that ensemble, that you compute the, 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 motor, the average state, which is given by Averaging, okay, all these states, okay. Then, what is the, the, the problem is that, I mean, uh, this ensemble here, what is collected here, she's collecting an ensemble of states from her outputs, 
Okay? Now, the label bound now is basically given by, of this ensemble, okay, is, the sh is the phenomenon entropy of the average state, this guy, okay, okay minus somehow the, <coughs> the phenomenon entropy of the single uh, of the single uh, of the single uh, states in the system, and remember the phenomenon entropy is the quantum generalization of the the Shannon entropy, if you want. So it's something like this, okay, minus trace log ro, log two. This uh, you have formulas to compute this, okay? So that's each, that's the phenomenon entropy, okay? So you have to imagine that. Uh, uh, so she's collecting a lot of these outputs here. These outputs are now an ensemble of states for her, and which have memory of what was the, the input, of course, okay? So this label here somehow is like the, the input label of Alice. So it was the encoding, if you want. In that case, so A, 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 right? To make it this more, more precise for the scheme, I mean, to give you an idea. <coughs> so she wants to understand what is A, what is the encoding, okay? And, and basically the Olevo bounds, which is basically the mutual information between that encoding A, so the mutual information between that encoding A and, and if, that is, uh, it is bounded by this Olevo bound. So that is really the maximum information that if his dropper can steal about the encoding, A. So okay, so you compute this, uh, this ensemble of state, you compute the average state, you compute the phenomenon entropy of the average state, the phenomenon entropy of the signal of the individual states, you do this operation, you have this number, you have this basically this Olevo bound. And you have this. Okay, so details, you can find details here. I mean, it's not, as long as, when you, see, you understand the concepts, the details are not such a, a big uh, uh, problem. But when you got that, you do the calculation, uh, remarkably, for this protocol, the bp 4 so with this attack, this strategy, you can compute that to level bound, and Finally, you find that the rate, okay, the rate is the same as before, and you find that the rate is basically one half, one uh, was minus, um, at, uh, yeah, two, yes, there, should be there, yeah, two H2, uh, the Q bar, so D there is the Q bar. Okay. So now this is actually, now this is the rate you achieve, okay? So this, this basically is the rate for this protocol, so for, for, uh, for this, with this attack. So bb 4 under this optimal attack. When this rate is positive now? Okay, so if you, if you simply solve this, you put this equal to zero, okay? You have basically the, the, the Q bar that you can, you can tolerate, the, the, the threshold, okay? So by imposing R equal to zero, solving this equation, remember this is actually, this comes up to be the, the banal Sharon entropy here by the calculations, even though we started with the phenomenon entropy, eh? that was quite a very huge simplification. So if you put that R equal to zero, which is the threshold, okay? It's really like the threshold value. It gives you a corresponding threshold value for the Q bar. Okay, and when you solve this equation, you find that the Q-bar threshold value is around 11%. And with a more general analysis, okay, even with more powerful attacks than this, okay, uh, that is actual, the actual minimum, okay? So uh, that is actually the, the minimum threshold of the bb 4 so no matter how strong is your attack, I mean, how good is your attack, you cannot 
go below that. So what does it mean? It means that if I am my cube error below 11%, okay, then I'm fine. I know that there is a positive rate. So as long as you know, I'm below 11%, I have a positive rate. No matter what is the attack, because any attack will be included. Okay? So below 11% is a positive rate. I can do then error correction, privacy amplification, and extract a key rate, which is given by this quantity, this positive quantity here, in terms of bits per use of the protocol or per use of the channel. If I, I am, of course, at the, at the threshold, the rate is zero, and I have to board the protocol. And yeah, and that's basically the content here. And here, uh, we, um, in, the, in, the, in the notes, you can also find actually more general proofs about this. It is about the conditional security. Uh, basically, they said the same cube bear. So basically, the same cube bear turns out to be, I mean, it, that's, it's a very general. I mean, even if you consider more general, more general attacks, more general uh, scenario and approaches, whatever, it doesn't matter. That is the, that is the, the, the threshold. OK, so. Uh, we have the break now, and after the break, I, I hope to have uh, enough time to talk about CVKKD and some CKK capacities. Uh, I will go through the main concepts, try to avoid details. But I mean, I really wanted to show you, uh, I mean, the, the BBT4, the concepts, and the, the mathematics of the security proofs, OK? I mean, at least the, 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 well, the most interesting and, the, and somehow also at the same time easier. To, to do, uh, so that's why I spent two hours, okay, instead of uh, one probably. <laughs> okay, thank you. See you after the break.